All right, we have Emerald Talia versus Emerald Udia. Who's going to win? The Udia is obviously, we know this champion, not in the strongest state he's ever been, but honestly, one tricks the mains are having no issue getting him to Diamond and Plus and Master Plus, so you shouldn't have an issue either. Talia is one of the great meta surfers, pun not intended with the skin, in the game. She's really difficult to play, really rewards good junglers with good mechanics, but mostly good anticipation. That E for mobility, that W for disengage, is equally as good as the engage with it. So, what can we do with this champion and emerald? Let's see how we go. And let's see what the Udyr does, obviously. Halo Blades on him, first strike in the Talia, that's pretty good. You can go Dark Harvest, also always could. I have seen some electrocutes, but while like damage proc is nice on the one shot, you kind of one shot without it, so it's not really needed. And Aurelian Soul will be strong later no matter what. So, clear cross timer, 221, that's pretty good. Udyr cross is over at 224. It's been a while since we talked about the cross timers, but remember, when you are practicing your clears on your chosen champion, track when you cross from the red side to the blue side or the blue side to the red side, compare your clear to your favorite jungler, your favorite challenger jungler, and see where you're losing time and in which quadrant. Because some people have magnificent blue quadrants and terrible red quadrants, but they spend so much time trying to find the optimization on the blue side when it's perfect, and all you got to do is figure out the red side problem. We have a LeBlanc support with a Twitch ADC and a Ziggs and Blitzcrank, so that's going to be interesting. Obviously, they've already moved up to Ward. If you're paying attention to when they dip in and out of vision, you will see this. So we know it's warded, but can we get a gank off anyway? We have a good angle of approach here. Blitzcrank is a little slow, but they disengage as expected. This guy's full clearing pretty damn slowly, but that's fine. I mean, that was a nice clear by the Talia, though. And of course, the cool thing about using double smite on your clear that'll be faster is that you come for this gank quicker. And you don't need your smite for the scuttle. Because it's pre-330, and this guy's going in the other direction, you're not contesting this, the, the, the scuttle crab, and we can use the time to gank first to set up a guaranteed prior scenario for this. We're thinking about it. Obviously, now you have to wait a little bit. I wouldn't do this. I would go and ward the, the grump first. I'd go ward the grump, and then come back down for this, and then repeat gank bottom lane. Udi's obviously on the top side. Let's see how we do. It's a tough lane to gank, honestly. She does it in another order, but that's fine as well. It's not really... I'm being nitpicky. You could have done it in either order. The only reason I would do it in this order and this order first is if this looked volatile enough that I'd need to rotate before getting to ward, or I thought I was going to go cross mid lane. Like, say the jungler goes here, 24 CS, level 4, and dies. That means I know that Scuttle Crab's available. So this is warded. I can take this cross mid lane in the shadows and then go ahead and take the double Scuttle. And then obviously if this is gankable, do that as well. Otherwise... Back to base, do your quadrant, relax. A lot of cool things you can do. Relax is a cool thing to do as well. Now, here we go. This is the problem with it. Tough, tough lane to gank. The distortion, the camo. Hold that thought. You absolutely must head over to Vakayu.gg. I have a free jungle improvement resource as well as a dedicated program where we have jungle video courses, jungle coaching, coaching VOD libraries, weekly free video content see nowhere else, as well as Q&As and patch note rundowns, as well as a private jungle discord. And if there's one thing I'm good at, it's making junglers reach their goals as we saw with the record number of people hitting them at the end of season 13. If you want to climb faster than anyone you know, jungle diff every game you play, click the link below or head to Vakayu.gg. Unless Twitch is like, not thinking at all about what he's doing, because obviously we see the Udyr there as well. Uh, he gets way too aggressive with it. Now everyone just turns on him. We don't really hit that W, but that's fine. Don't ask. Sometimes I have no idea. See, now having that E would be really good. It's, like, it's a good champion. The spacing with your Q is important, but the E there is huge. The W back knock up. There you go. Blitzcrank will come forward. Really nicely done again. Do we have the damage? Not quite. And of course, you get blocked by the mini wave. But huge. Huge beginning. Nice overall strategy. I'm happy to to witness this. And the Udi, of course, now will go to this. This is where the ward is lazy. Like, you should really guarantee that you see the grump. Make sure you see the grump. You don't need this little, this vision on the left side. Everything on the right side is, is truly all that you need to ensure you can tell what the Udi is doing. Because I want to know if the Udi is going to go. Well, we see him here, obviously. But what if he did the grump and went back to base and you had no idea? What if he just shattered around this way because someone saw you ward and he thought it was warded? Who knows, right? It's just you want to guarantee the information with a good ward. Just in case something random happens. Obviously, here we see it. So does he finish the walls and go back to base? Does he finish the walls and go to the raptors and do the krugs afterwards? Does he finish the walls, go to the raptors and try to do the scuttle crab without... Scuttle crab. The, the grubs without buying? We don't know. 
All we know is that he 100% went to the Wolves. And now we use our prior. This is huge. Well, sorry, I didn't mean to go so quickly. As you come topside here, because that Udi is on the, onto the Gromp and onto the Wolves, you know that he might go back to base or stay out. We have item advantage in the Alternator and Dark Seal, which means if we can do Grubs quickly and he wants to contest, we win that. Also, we have mid prior. Pretty damn important to recognize that as well. So here in this scenario, worst case scenario, you should be going straight for the grubs just to deny them from him. Even if you don't value these at all, making sure he doesn't get them is just as much to win because he will waste his time looking for them and wasting resources and things like that. However, FKC top lane, hey Fiora, you're kind of low and I've got my support rotating with me. Why don't we go ahead and get a nice little gank up here? Super nice, super free. Now, can we translate this kill into objectives? Udir has stayed out, which guarantees that he should not go for this. Don't go for it, Udir. You haven't paid for anything. One grub is down. Here's the LeBlanc rotating. That does change things a little bit. And now that the Yoda's gone back to base, it does affect us because Fiora has TP and the Zac has to base. So the situation has evolved a little bit. We do have a smite here. Obviously, use it at 600. And then if you think this has evolved to the point you can no longer fight, leave. The problem is we waited too long on our smite. To coin flip it, we have 600, use it at 600 and bounce. Take your two and walk away. You do not need to die for this whatsoever. If you think you can actually win this fight and Yone is going to rotate, please stick around and make the fight. But obviously, now there's the 3v2 and this is exactly what we're trying to avoid. Because we're level 4, the LeBlanc has rotated over, the Zac is in the picture. I don't want to result space this and be like, yeah, you know, this is a good fight to, to have. Twitch has rotated as well. And now we're just going a mega, mega fist as Fiora gets kills also. See, there you go. I don't I don't even know who's truly winning this scenario. The, the Fiora getting anything is pretty damn bad. Um, the Ziggs is obviously pushing the turrets, but the Twitch getting anything here is also not so good. Yeah. Not good. So I like the overall play. Gank first, go for the grubs. If he stays out, we win. Problem is, Yone goes back to base. He wasn't in the picture. Zach has to go back to base. He wasn't in the picture. LeBlanc shows up. If it's just the Udir, fine. We'll fight it, we'll kill him, no stress. But because they now had huge numbers, take two, smite early, and run away. That's it. That's a fight, ping everyone off. We're done. Force the rotation from the Twitch, give them the one grub. Force the whole team to rotate. And they get one grub and zero kills. You win. And that's kind of the point of driving home here as well. From this, you can fall back to your Blue Set Quadrant. Obviously, a little nervous, uh, but I don't think we need to be. Yeah, so he's pushing bottom lane. There's Udir with Swifties getting a free kill. Uh, well, I, I don't know. Bot blame moment. Now, obviously, from that, you know that he's most likely going to go to the... Again, most likely going to go to the Dragon. Could easily cut into the mid lane. We see the pings. Could easily cut back here. Could easily go here. He could do a lot of different things. So I like where the Talia's head is at, which is, hey, let me counter jungle. And when we go for that, we see the rotation. And now we can trap. Do we win this 2v3? Question mark. Probably not. So in which case, leave. I don't think we should be here at all. Fiora's not in the picture. Zack is busy chilling on the wave. I don't want to be here at all. This is not economy permitted. This is not golden experience permitted. This is a bad situation to be in. I like the idea of saying, hey, he's probably on Dragon. Let me take his jungle in the meantime and gank top lane. But the problem is, he didn't do Dragon. The Blanc Road, which is what she does, to the mid lane, to Goon Squad. I see the Goon Squad, I'm like... All right, I'm out. See ya. Go down to the bottom side, do these camps, uh, go here. Like, you see Udyr chase, just go around here, say thank you, thank you, gank the Twitch. I uh, use your ult to, to lock him down. Like, there's more plays you can make by just sacrificing the Yone and sacrificing the side of the map, especially if Udyr wants to chase the Yone across the damn country. Just go around. Shatter. Waves pushed up nicely. You can easily shatter across here. Ooh, a little close, but you can do it. Ignore this. Tight pathing against the wall, like that, and you're good. Into his jungle, snake some things, kill the Twitch, live your life instead of dying because you thought you could actually win a 4v3. Your Zac is clearly not fully aware of what's going on in this game, and now we're totally compromised. Now, all of a sudden, the Udi is 1 1 3, gold amount 2.6, and we're at 3.2, which is still a gold lead for us, but his team is significantly further ahead because of the residual impact of our decisions. Truth. Forced the grubs instead of taking two and running away. Stuck around here instead of just sacrificing and going and taking other things. If you go take other things, you get the zig snowball, you're in a good position. Now, at this stage, 
Most likely, I do think Udyr, I, I think Udyr could easily come down here. So I've done a full clear, basically. Let me just shadow into the bottom lane gank. If Udyr doesn't show, I get a good gank off. If he does, I get a great counter gank, and we get a dragon thereafter. Oh, look, there he is. That worked out for me. I could have paused a little later. See what happens. Hit on the Twitch, but put him closer to the Ziggs. Uh, we do kill him. Udyr shows up here. Obviously, this is where Talia is... Definitely weaker. I'm glad that we turned onto the LeBlanc. But this is where Talia is weaker. Against things like this that can stay on top of her, that don't allow her to keep that kiting distance. If she's able to keep the kiting distance, she's in a good place. So this particular game, what's a good item for us? Ludens is fine, but I, I, I still like having a Leandris and a Rylai's in these kinds of games. Uh, not the Leandris necessarily, but definitely I would, I would like to have a Rylai's this game for the slow, right? Twitch... Udyr, Aurelian Soul, LeBlanc, I think keeping people in place is huge. And I think a Death Cap plus a Crypt Bloom or a Void Stuff and, and a, you know, a Rylai is probably a good way to go. She's got a lot of flexible itemization. The question therein is, why are we even down here? So I don't care if we kill the Udyr here and get a Skeletal Crab. Why are we down here on the bottom side when this dragon is already gone? The dragon's been taken. We died here, he's going to go and do it. Go top side and take the Grubs. Get yourself another couple Grubs. Or go counter jungling if you hate the Grubs that much. But you know that the guy's here, so leave the base, cut across, thank you, thank you, thank you. Ult top lane, can we kill? Nice. Do I want the grubs? Can we fight it? Sure, do it, otherwise no, do your blue side. You follow? That's where I see the game developing. But contesting this dragon, when it's guaranteed gone, unnecessary. And now you're in his jungle, right? LeBlanc will rotate over, there she is. Aurelian Soul can rotate over as well. And he just, see? He just said no. See ya. Bye. You guys want to float around? Like, he's just going to go for the grubs now. Yes. 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 I'm very happy with this from Ludia. This is good. Uh, I'm not happy that he's going necessarily AD. That's also worth noting. That's why he can assassinate so quickly. Once he's on you, he's got the AD. I still think you just go regular build path, but there is some credence to building like this at the moment, and it is decently strong. So I had a coaching class from the private Discord, obviously, um, today. And the Belveth did a similar thing. The Belveth repeat ganked this bottom lane, kind of like this again, when she could have just gone topside to deny the grubs and take his red side, prevent him from getting anything. The bottom lane was fine, and she didn't need to stay, but she did. And in turn, the enemy jungler got a lot of stuff on the top side, and from there, they snowballed the game. So when you're denying an enemy jungler and you're actually doing quite well, don't go for these fluff kills. Like, this is a fluff kill versus actually backbreaking Bane versus Batman taking camps, taking grubs, killing top lane, removing what he wants to do. And because you do this, right? Because you do this, he's now in your jungle as well. And this is where you don't get freebies. Uh, this whole sequence is not good. Not a good ultimate. Yeah, this whole sequence is exactly what Udi, Udi's making the right play. I like it. Obviously, in this case, when Zack walks down, be careful. Now Talia sees that all of it is most likely gone. We're just chilling. We're not Evelyn. The block is tough to hit the W on. There you go. <laughs> As I said, she's tough, but we hit the Aurelian Soul. Mind games. Uh, Udyr base is here, which is, you know, he's got Ghost Blade. Yeah, that's fine, little snack. Talia can do that. We take that snack. Takes his red. Go to his Krugs. Most likely. And he can loop back over. He only shoved with this. We've taken this turret plate, which is great. But I still think like 42 grubs is not fair. We should have had five. The bases. Blasting one makes the most sense. Like, I'm very happy with the way that Udyr stabilized. Like, he was not playing very well early, but since then, nice cut in topside. He got it. He put himself back in the game. Always as I say something. But remember, with this build, this why I don't like it, you're super squishy. At this stage, the satchel charge is used. You see the Blitzcrank. Why are you full committing to this? Because Tilly could always rotate. There is a big silence. Once the guy satchel charges out and you see Blitzcrank just back up, you know you got your camps. Play it safe. You're not going to assassinate anybody, especially against the Talia. So, good job by the Talia. Death hook. And, of course, uh, yeah. Nice rotation. That's all I really have to say about that. But you can see Emerald is interesting, no? Like, this, this, uh, there's a lot of this back and forth. Hey, I'm in control, and the enemy juggler makes mistakes. Then the one in control makes a mistake, and the enemy juggler's back in control. Hey, I'm in control. 
and then they just go back and forth like this the whole time. They seesaw the whole time, and that's why no one truly dominates as much in terms of the whole game. Like, someone can have better KDAs, but... Q2 is the boulder. Good patience on that. Good patience. Didn't overreact, saw the Twitch showing up, knew he couldn't kill uh, the Tilia, so just disengaged, went for the full combo. He would do it now, it's like, this is much better, I can just run people down. There it is. But he's squishy with this. Very squishy. Could just hold mid lane after the red. No plates really to worry about, but... Why does he... Why does he walk up? Like, sure that Udyr doing that with the Q Max build is, is a little ridiculous, but why did you even walk up when you know that he could do that? Like, yes, it's bullshit, but you know it's bullshit, so why do you let him bullshit on you? <laughs> uh, gold's amount of 40 minutes. Uh, 6,000 on the Udyr now and 7,100 on the Talia. She's done a good job for a strike working. Udyr done a solid job as well with his picks. And Talia did a nice little catch up with her farming. So I feel like both junglers are in a solid spot. I don't really have too much neg uh, too many negative things to say. Just small things, right? Like, don't die here unnecessarily if you're the Udyr. Nice counter gank here as well. Nice catch-up experience. Sorry. Catch-up experience isn't the issue, but nice catch-up tempo that he did when the Talia made a mistake. Talia went down here way too long, wasted too much time. He said, look, I'm losing the game. Now I can actually counter jungle and take everything, which is huge. She obviously takes the uh, Rift Herald. Gold amount here is at 2,000, so we do have enough for a completion. Let's see if she goes for it. I mean, I think I'm okay trading this dragon. But I don't think we should stay out this much longer now. If you finish the Herald, and you can go get an item and go do something about the dragon. Or rotate here, do it. There's no reason to stay out beyond that point. It, it will work out for us because we're strong on Wittalia. Force of Flash, nice wall. Um, but the issue still remains... The issue still remains, your team could die. If it's a closer game and you don't have this gold spent, you might not kill people. That's all. Is that just running it down? Interesting. So there's two bot lane, three dead. They're pushing this turret, which is not terrible. Um, another charge as well. But I don't know. I feel like Twitch could have done this without me. Like if I'm the Udyr here, Nice! There's a combo, but nice repost. I feel like as Udyr, this is a bit of a dumb thing for him to be doing. Come on, minions. Oh, close enough. If you had those mites, like I said, if you had the five grubs, that's dead. Much, really dead. And I think the Udyr here is doing a good job counter jungling, but the Twitch could have done this without us. We could have gone back to base and sure, we're not going to do anything, but we could use our, 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 our Phoenix stance, our uh, unborn, Wingborn Storm. And we can actually just hold the wave and maybe prevent a second turret being taken. Because in theory, this is coin flip. You can't say like, see, we could help we could hold it. You don't you don't know. So yeah. Interesting. Very interesting. Now he stays out. Delay goes for the Shadow Flame. Nothing wrong with that. Shadow Flame's good too. We like this also. Definitely think we can do a, a void stuff and a, a realize this game though. You also just do death cap. Like, you decide how much utility you want in your kit. I'm just thinking from a speed point of view. I think if you're snowballing hardcore, even with Zyra, I just I build like this. Not necessarily these items, but I like the Shadow Flame. But I've realized that sometimes it's not just about that raw power I get from 1v9. It's about the utility from the more, the less carry items, the more utility based items that allows more scenarios to end well for me and my team, not just me. Just an observation. But I do play. The heavy AP damage builds also. Until they always have. Weird not having mythics so you can go Ludens and Rylize now. Strange. So we do the quadrant, we go back to the mid lane. Obviously is juicy, very nice. Nice a W. Uh, repost used. Now we can just keep spamming. There it is. There it is. Beautiful Q flash into the Q2. She's playing super. The Udyr just seems a bit lost. Like, yes, you've done a good job. Your build's a little ridiculous, but you're not actually doing anything to win the game. I think if we were to summarize the issue in Emerald in general, is that you get players like this Talia who make a few tempo errors, but play largely very well. And they push the map, they push their advantages and all this stuff. 
And then you've got things like the Udyr, who feels like he's doing a good job, and he wants to blame his team. But in reality, it's like, what did he actually do to help civilization? You know, these assassinations were good. This assassination was good. Some of the kills here were great. Good job. But what did you do about them? What did you do afterwards? Nothing. Like, he went and pushed this one while they lost this. He's just not in a position to actually have anything he's doing be a meaningful contribution to victory. It's it's soft kills. Like I told you here, these soft kills from the Talia. She lost everything here, and the Udyr made the right play and actually took it. But a lot of his kills thereafter were also just soft kills. Didn't net objectives, didn't net advantages, didn't deny anything. They were just things that he did. And it looks cool, but at, at the end of the day, it's a fake diamond. It's just a fake diamond. Now everybody wants a real thing. Or a properly constructed man-made one. Just not a fake diamond. Yeah? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I am I am from South Africa, so... Uh, yeah, good. Ethical diamonds, please. Ethical diamonds. So the uh, Udyr does, again, like another kill and just runs it down. I, I don't know. And people like this honestly are a bit delusional. They think, hey, why aren't my team following me? Look at what I'm doing. Why can't they play off of me? And he has no idea that what he's doing is just meaningless. Which sounds sucky, but it's true. Jeremy Clarkson, it's true. We have uh, LeBlanc feeling the wrath of the um, of the Tilly. See, there's the Leandries. I like the Leandries as well. That's fine too. A lot of HP on the team. Good DPS as well. Dot damage is massive. And you can see the, the, the what comes out of it. It's, it's huge. From this, really, I don't think you need Void. I think Death Cap is fine if you're smoking it this hard, honestly. And if you lose your stacks down the line, you can swap into Penetration Item. But that, you don't really need Rylas if they're running into you. Ha ha ha. Well, <laughs> Ziggs is like, guys, help me. No one even noticed that the Ziggs died. This just carried on moving. <laughs> Her movement speed is obviously the strong part of her kit that they kind of know and buff over and over again as well. This is a really good game from the Talia. You know, minus the bottom lane shenanigans, which I think, again, don't results-based the events. The Udyr did a good job to offset her advantage through that play. Unfortunately, the Udyr is very intent on not actually winning this, so... The build, as you can see, is pretty dumb. Good job. You see here, I don't know why we're here. We could just be pushing this wave. That's where a lot of uh, Emerald Junglers lose a bit of... Macro, here, shove, 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 shove. Let's go. Push this in, push this in. Everybody's dead, everyone's bottom lane, just push it up. Take in Hibs, you're with the Zac, there you go. Take everything, now you can recall, and now you can go straight to the Baron and end. This should definitely be double in Hibs, triple in Hibs here as well. The Talia is now wasting time. You don't need Baron, you don't need Baron. This, this is way too emerald for me. You don't need it. Why are we sitting here for this? Push, join, push, push. You can just end the game here. Honestly? If you don't end the game in, in Emerald because you think you need these Barons, you don't. You're baiting your whole team into this. You could have taken their whole base right now, reset all together, now you can go Baron. If you even would need to. But because you weren't there to do damage and actually kill their team as a respawn, now you're forced to go Baron, go back to base, buy, we got into the Cripplum, there it is. It's still fine. Honestly, you can hear the way I'm saying, like, when you're this fed, honestly, you could build anything and publicize it. Be like, look at this OP build. You were so fed, it didn't matter. You could have built Lich Bane and, and, and the Cosmic Drive and whatever ridiculous items put together. Wouldn't matter. But I, I don't think we needed the Baron to end this game at all. We had so much damage, but it was a good game. Well thought out by the Talia. Good correction by the Udyr, and then he just absolutely ran it. Like, I'm not even... I don't... Yeah. The problem is most people see Udyr players like that. Now they think all Udyr players are like that. A thinking Udyr player is a strong Udyr player. And we go ahead and end. So, nice Emerald game for us. Hopefully you can see a couple of things that allow you to get to Diamond. A lot of mental things and just having some restraint and understanding. Uh, Tilly did die at the end. Unlucky. Courses are updated now with the Season 14 class. VOD libraries updated. Class VOD libraries updated. Uh, everything's stacked up with knowledge for Season 14 climbing. So, I hope to see you on the website. Or otherwise, in the next video.